there are basically two classes of observables that people talk about, or maybe two or three, that we're interested in that are still very um, open and significant. So one of those is the gravitational wave signature, um, which the, the, the sort of the foregrounds for which have recently been, been seen, um, but we're interested in the, in the primordial signal. Um, and there, the interesting thing is that it's sensitive to quantum gravity in a very precise sense. So we have this inflationary potential energy that generates accelerated expansion for a long time, according to the, the paradigm of inflation. And it's a very um, simple theorem that that physics um, correlates the range of the field that moves during inflation, the so-called inflaton field, um, compared to the highest scale we know in physics, the, the Planck scale. Um, it correlates that range of that field relative to the Planck scale to the observable range of gravity waves, primordial, primordial gravity waves. And so um, that means, in essence, that there's an infinite sequence of terms in the effective potential that drives inflation. One really needs a, a so-called UV completion, a short distance completion of gravity and particle physics in order to properly model the inflationary epoch. And that's just a gigantic opportunity. I mean, that is that level of, of you know, that level of probing high energy physics is really unprecedented. It's not something one can do with particle accelerators. Um, and so there's already been theoretical work trying to understand how to produce um, inflation within UV complete um, physics. And for that, we have a good candidate, which is string theory. It's, it's, a, it's a, uh, just a candidate. We don't have any current observational ev evidence for it. Um, but there's a lot of consistency conditions that it satisfies. And, and there's good evidence that at least it is a theoretical framework for, for quantum gravity that makes sense. And within that, we can model inflation, including this large field possibility. How close are we to uh, measuring whether uh, the field range is large field or small field? Well, according to the observers, um, and you can tell me what you think, <laughs> the uh, claim is that they will get to this threshold that I keep talking about within you know, the next five years or something and that there's the capacity to really make a significant you know, five sigma detection of, of that signature if it, if it lies on the super Planckian uh, side of this, of this so-called life bound. So if, if the field did roll a large distance, the claim that I hear from observers is that it can be, uh, not, you know, it, it, can, it can be detected at a, a good significance. How about non-Gaussian energy? That yes. is also covered quite a bit. In, it in was session. yes, and I that was the second observable that I that I had that I mentioned um, that that we should get to. So there, um, it's a whole set of of quantities of parameters, if you like, that that one can measure formally. It's a function's worth of of information, although the access that we'll have is is probably limited to a finite number of parameters. Um, but what these tell us about is uh, the number of fields that were participating in the primordial perturbations that seeded structure and how they interacted. And, you know, familiar physics is all about interactions. So one of the most striking things about the primordial perturbations so far is, is how linear they are, how little they interact. The Planck results and, and previous results have been, you know, beautiful. They have not quite closed these windows, uh, particularly for uh, the equilateral shape and other somewhat similar shapes of, of non-Gaussianity. So a lot of the excitement that you hear about in sessions like this has to do with the opportunities for closing that window, not with CMB, but with large scale structure. And that involves a lot of interesting physics that has to be done both theoretically and, and observationally in order to, to do that. But the, the claim is that it can give, or at least some people are claiming, and this is widely discussed and debated, that you know they could 
they could uh, basically close the, the whole window, which, which um, would in fact be a huge improvement relative to CMB. The observations have been confirming the simplest model of cosmology that we have, the so-called Lambda CDM model, but um, we understand for one thing, what that means, what kind of precision constraints we get on interesting physics just from that. Um, and we also understand what more there is to do. And the excitement has to do with the fact that there's a huge amount left to do. And there, there's going to be a big jump. This B mode measurement, this primordial gravity wave signature is a big qualitative question that currently remains completely unanswered. And within five years or so, the claim is it will be answered, and of course we hope for a detection, but even a null result would be very interesting because it crosses this threshold of, of the field range.